What's up, guys? So this year has been a little rough for me. I have maxed out the squat, my bench, and my deadlift in these last couple days. So in this video, I'm going to tackle those lifts one by one, talk about where I think I may have performed poorly, and just talk about how I could possibly improve in the future. So my numbers went from a 405 deadlift, a 330 squat, and a 185 bench press, to a 440 deadlift, a 370 squat, and a 225 pound bench press. All right, so let's start with the squat. Overall, on paper, very good. However, I still feel like I underperformed with the squat this year. So the working sets, they've always been moving well throughout the year. Yeah, squat usually doesn't give me too many issues in that regard. Uh, but it didn't move as well during the, the last week or so of the peak. I'm not honestly sure where it started to fall apart. Uh, I'm sure on, on the channel you can find a 355 and a 365 squat single that I did. Uh, those two were the last two weeks right before my deload. And going into that, I was thinking, hey, I might get like at least close to four plates. But it was not meant to be. Uh, I think one of the places where I went wrong there was how I scheduled my maxes on my actual max out week. For some reason, I'm a fool, and I did not go squat, bench, deadlift. I decided to go bench, deadlift, squat. So my squat was at the very end, when I was most fatigued. So, it's kind of egg on my face for that one. I don't know why I chose to do it like that. But, it is what it is. 370 was a grind and a half. And I'll tell you what, I was even debating doing 375. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> it, it was a very it was a very difficult rep to say the least. It, something I did well, at least during the year that I trained the squat, was I stayed consistent the best that I could. I would say squat was probably right up there with deadlift in terms of the most consistent lift that I was able to hit. Okay. So let's talk about the bench. My pressing movements are appalling, quite frankly. I'm weak as hell on all of my pressing movements. Uh, and that's for a couple of reasons. Allow the excuses to roll in here. So this one, I feel I definitely underperformed the most. It's just my programming was off, admittedly. Several months into the beginning of this, my working sets just did not feel right. Personally, I think that the issue was lack of volume. But I think with all of these pressing movements, I just really underestimate how much volume it tends to like. The upper body tends to like more volume than something like a squat or a deadlift. So in the future, I will be including more, uh, considerably more volume in all of my upper body training. Um, and then I think the biggest reason as to why I underperformed on bench was because of arm wrestling. I trained for arm wrestling, if you didn't know. And anyone who's trained arm wrestling knows that it's it's very hard on the tendons of the elbow and of the shoulder. And anyone who's had pain in those areas knows that if you have soreness or weakness or pain in these two places, it doesn't pair well with heavy bench, and I'll just say that. So many times... Many sessions I had instances where it was just, I was in a lot of pain. And so I had to bring down the weight to a point where it wasn't super substantial for my progression. Or just had to skip benching altogether. That is probably one of the biggest reasons for why the bench was the way it was. Hey, deadlifts. I am still salty that I missed that 455. You haven't seen the video. My uh, my right hand, supinated hand, it the bar just started slipping out of my hands that way. <clears throat> I feel like if I did it on a different day, I may have had it. I also feel like if I had chalk, I definitely would have had it. Unfortunately, the gym I was training at doesn't allow chalk. 
it is what it is. In my heart, I know I would have gotten that 455. Yeah. Thing is, uh, the deadlifts were moving well. The singles especially, and that's that's really what mattered uh, in, in my peak. They were moving well up until the second to last week. It may have been improper fatigue management. It may have been trying to do too many things. It may have been stressed from school. I'm not entirely sure. But I moved 430, no, 435 for two sets of singles in my peak. And then the very next week, 435 again as as a warm-up for, I was trying to go for like probably 445 or 450. It just moves like crap. And I, I just don't, I don't know quite why. <clears throat> but I decided that week, just going to call it there, would probably be risking bad form, injury, whatever, by going up more. So, yeah, that, that may have been, that may have been kind of a nail in the coffin for this week, but I, I just don't know. I don't know. So what are the takeaways? I think this year was overall, at least on paper, it was a good year. I stayed patient with my lifts, uh, especially with the maxes. Oh, relatively patient. I did try 455 on deadlift three separate times and failed each of them. But that's just because I was close. I didn't push the limits overtly past what I knew I was capable of in training or when maxing. And that is something that you know, I've always I've always wanted to keep to, to keep doing well with. Part of the issue with my underperformance this year may have been with how I arranged my maxes. Instead of, you know, bench deadlift squat, I should have gone squat bench deadlift. That probably would have saved me some of that fatigue from the deadlift from impacting my squat later. And that extra day of lower body recovery probably would have increased what I could have possibly done on deadlift. Uh, as well, I think uh, due to arm wrestling and due to the peak that I did for Night of the Living Deadlift, I missed out on accruing that volume that would ultimately lead to a PR. So by adding more of that time, by having fewer of these road bumps along the way, uh, this this could lead to better PRs in the future. I think I'm already starting to turn the corner around on that, uh, especially with arm wrestling. That has been the most chronic issue that I've dealt with this year. Uh, this January, February, March period, I've been managing the fatigue in my elbow and my shoulder a lot better. I've been missing less bench sessions so I hope to continue this trend, or at least be able to replicate it when I get back into heavy, heavy lifting again. But the biggest reason, in my mind, for why I underperformed was simply I set the goals too high for this year. I had a really, really good year. On my 18th birthday, I hit three out of four of my goals, one of which I couldn't hit because, you know, my wrist was messed up so I couldn't bench. I progressed from like a 275 deadlift to a 405 in the span of that year. And I thought, hey, I could do 130 pounds worth of improvement this year. So 90 will be no problem next year, right? Right? It was an issue. It was in fact an issue. You know, I feel like setting more reasonable goals would have made it feel less like I was underperforming and more like, hey, I just put like over a hundred pounds on my total this year. Pretty good. Pretty good. And that actually brings me into my plans for moving forward. I'm going to take at least the next two and a half months to stay away from a lot of the heavier uh, working set stuff that I have been doing. Uh, I think it's time I need to build back some base, need to get some muscle, follow kind of a more hypertrophy style program for a little bit. This this high volume style of training that I'll be doing soon is also in preparation for an arm wrestling tournament that I am going to be competing in. June 3rd, 
2023, I will be competing in the 176 pound weight class, uh, pro slash open division. I don't really know how they, how they call it these days, but, uh, I, my, my plan is to just show up the absolute best that I can and rock and roll. This will be my first arm wrestling tournament ever. I've had to miss two that I've been planning to go to because of school. So hopefully, you know, knock on wood and all, hopefully, unless there's some catastrophic thing that happens, I should be able to make it to this. I'm also looking to just do something new, something fun. Keep lifting fresh. Now, I have been chasing down these powerlifting goals with pretty much no deviation for the better part of two years. And to be honest, I'm a little burnt out on conventional deadlift, low bar squat, and bench press. I'm, I just am. I'm not going to be doing any low bar back squatting or any conventional deadlifting for this two and a half month stretch. And depending on how this goes, I may continue this high volume stretch for a little while longer. We'll see. Uh, I'll update you again probably after I've competed in the tournament. But make no mistake, I am not giving up on powerlifting. I'm not giving up on my goals and strength training or anything of that sort. This is just a break. <laughs> I'm burnt out, man, and I am beat up. Okay, final bit of news to wrap up this year in review is my goals for when I turn 20. The goal is to deadlift 485 pounds, to squat 405 pounds, and to bench with a pause 255 pounds. Now, these goals, they aren't nearly as ambitious as my last year of goals, but I think these are more realistic. I'm more likely to hit these. Just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. I know this vi this video is more for documentation purposes. I imagine it's not too interesting, but if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.